Hi there, I'm Tyler from Nelly Security, and in this video, we're going to talk about your gateway into the access control market with the ZK Teco Atlas series. Are you currently installing security cameras or burglar alarms for business owners? If so, chances are they probably need access control too. Have you seen our previous video, Why Aren't You Installing Access Control? That video walks you through everything you need to know about what access control is and how it can be a benefit to both you and your customers. In that video, we very quickly show you how to set up an access control system using the ZK Teco Atlas series products. But really, that video was just a primer. If you saw that video and it got you interested in access control, you may be wondering what's next. Are you still nervous to pull the trigger and fully jump into the world of AC systems? If so, then this video is for you. In this video, we're going to start small and help you get your feet wet with access control. I mean, after all, you have to start somewhere, right? Well, we recommend starting off easy with a single door access control system from ZK Teco's Atlas series products. In this video, we're going to walk you step by step through setting up your very first single door access control system. Once you try this for yourself and see just how easy it is to set up a single door system, you just might gain enough confidence to move on to multi-door installations. This is probably going to be a pretty lengthy video, so before we get started, I just want to walk you through the layout of this video so that you know what you're getting yourself into, and if you need to, you can skip ahead to the parts that pertain to you. First, we're going to tackle some of the pain points of access control. We get that this is a tricky business, especially when you're just starting out. So we just want to help you navigate some of the possible reasons why you haven't started access control yet. After that, we're going to jump right into the shallow end of the pool and help you get your feet wet in the wonderful world of access control. We will show you exactly what products and tools you need for your first installation. We will unbox the ZK Teco Atlas Series Single Door Kit. And finally, we will walk you through every step of the installation, from mounting your hardware and running the wires, to wiring everything to your access control panel, to getting everything set up on the web interface, and even setting up your mobile device for remote access. Now after you've done this a couple of times and gotten your feet wet with the single door system, you're probably going to want to move into the deep end and start getting into some multi-door access control. So we're going to end this video by giving you some practical next steps, pointing you in the right direction, and sending you on your way. So before we get into the pool, so to speak, let's talk about why you haven't started access control yet. There are a number of pain points that are probably preventing you from fully jumping in. One reason that you may not be installing access control systems is because you think it's way too complex. Well, that's exactly why we're making this video, to show you just how easy it can be. You'll find that it's not any more difficult than installing security cameras or burglar alarms. As a matter of fact, it may be easier than those in some situations. We always tell people that the hardest part of setting up a security system is not the technical aspects, it's actually the physical labor that you're going to endure while running the wires. Access control is really no different, but since you already know how to run wires, you got this part covered. Now something else that might be preventing you from jumping headfirst into the world of access control is local and state laws. There may be some licensing and permit codes that are present in your state, and that can really turn people off to this business. Now, this is a valid concern, especially when installing access control in public places. So a door that your AC system might be controlling might need some protocols just in case of a power failure, or let's say a fire happens and you need to ensure that people can escape to safety. There are also other instances where only a certain type of lock can be installed on a door in public places. So before you get started, you're really gonna wanna check your local and state codes for licensing and permits, local fire department requirements, building codes, egress requirements, the list goes on and on, and it really can sound daunting and overwhelming. The thing is, it's a lot to bite off all at once, so don't bite it off all at once. You have to get started somewhere, so just get started. You will learn everything that you need to learn along the way. Another pain point that might be preventing you from jumping into access control is the sheer number of locks. Some are more difficult than others to install. The lock that we're going to be using today is a magnetic lock, and it's actually pretty easy. It's a pretty good idea to start small with a lock like this before you try moving on to some of the more advanced options out there. Now once you do start getting into more advanced jobs, you will run into locks that require a lot more work, like cutting into door frames, for example. Again, this should not stop you from diving into the very profitable world of access control. We suggest consulting or subbing out work to a local locksmith, someone who is very experienced and licensed in electric door locks. 
You should also look for someone who's experienced with access control because they'll be more able to help you with installing the hardware and they can also give you advice on how to apply the right logic to each scenario. No one ever said that if you want to start access control, you have to do it alone. Subbing out the door hardware installation is actually very common in this industry. So if you take this route, just be sure to include that in your quote to your customer. Let's run over these three pain points one more time. One, you think the systems are way too complex. Two, you're unsure about the licensing and permitting codes in your state. And three, there are some skills that you just don't have, like locksmithing. But here's the thing, if you're looking at an 84 door installation, then yeah, it's gonna look quite a bit complex. If you're looking at a list of all the permits you need for every situation you could ever come across in access control, it's gonna be a pretty long and scary list. And if you're convinced that this is a one person job and that you have to master every single skill involved in access control before you can get started, then you're never going to get started. Before you can install an 84 door access control system, you have to start with just one. One single door access control system. You can handle that. You can handle whatever business codes or permits or licensing you need for that one door. And if you use the magnetic lock that we're gonna show you today, you don't even really need to start outsourcing this work yet. You can do everything on your own until you get to some of the more complex jobs. So, with those pain points out of the way, are you ready to get started? We're now gonna get your feet wet and give you some small steps that you can take today in order to achieve your bigger goals later down the road. Now, if you've made it this far in the video and you haven't backed out and started watching cat videos, then I know that you're somewhat interested in access control, but something is still holding you back. And I know us sitting here and talking about all the benefits isn't gonna make this decision any easier for you. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to follow along with me throughout this video. This isn't just a video that I want you to watch, learn a thing or two, and then go about your daily life. I really want you to take these action steps that we're gonna give you and apply them to your own business so that you can get started and start building your confidence and access control. The worst that could happen is that after you set up this single door system, you realize that access control really isn't for you. And that's okay, because at least you tried and at least you know. But the best thing that could happen is you discover an untapped gold mine full of economic growth and development for you and your business. You may find ways to upsell current customers on access control systems, or you just might find an entire new group of customers just waiting for you to come along. Now here is the very first step that I want you to do. Find a willing customer. And remember, we're starting small here. Don't find a customer that's willing to throw down tens of thousands of dollars to set up a huge access control system. Think about some of your loyal small business owners. Maybe someone who you know is always willing to try something new. Do you know of anyone who may want a single door access control system so that they can do things such as track what time and which employees enter and exit their building, or grant and deny access to their building during certain times of the day and for specific people? Or maybe they want the ability to control their doors through their computer or their cell phone? Okay, go ahead and pause this video, look through your customer files, make some phone calls, send some emails, make a social media post. All you need is one willing customer and one door. All right, you got it? Great, let's move on to step two. Now, this next step is only applicable to new customers. So if you've shopped at Nelly Security before and you're already one of our dealers, then you have full permission to tune me out for the next few seconds. But if you are a new customer, head on over to nellysecurity.com dealers. Here, you'll be able to fill out a very short and simple application to join our 100% free dealer program. Now, this step is very important. If you skip it, you're gonna miss out on our dealer discount. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and click the links in the description below, which will take you to the different products that we're gonna be using throughout this video. The first one will take you to the ZK Teco Atlas Series Single Panel System. Now this has just about everything you need to set up your access control system. It's got a lot of great products in there, and remember, if you're one of our dealers, you will get a discounted price. The next link is the Maglock that I'll be using. Now this is really optional. You can use any lock that you have at your disposal. You can search the web. There are hundreds of kinds of locks out there, but this mag lock is really easy and we recommend this for a beginner just getting started. Now the rest of these products, I'm sure you already have them around your home or your workshop somewhere, but for the sake of being comprehensive, I'm just gonna go ahead and list those out. This is the wire that you'll need for your access control system. And yes, you will need both. This is low voltage cable and you'll need the kind with two conductors, and the kind with six conductors. You'll need a female DC pigtail adapter and a 12 volt DC power supply. This is for the mag lock. If you're gonna be using another lock, 
you might need additional supplies. You'll need some ethernet cable long enough to connect your AC board to a PoE switch, or if you're not using PoE, you'll still need an ethernet cable long enough to connect it to your router. You'll need some wire connectors like this, or some electric tape for holding the wires into place. You'll need a drill and a screwdriver. So go ahead and pause this video again, get your hands on these products, either add them to your cart at NellySecurity.com or go gather up whatever materials you already have at your disposal. Once you have everything ready to go, go ahead and hit play and continue following along. Now, once your ZK Teco Atlas Series single door kit comes in the mail, this is what it's gonna look like. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. First, you'll find this box of proximity cards. Each user will have their own proximity card with their own unique credentials, and this is how they will gain access into the restricted area. Now there are 50 of these that come in this box, and this is most likely way more than enough for this simple single door system. Next you'll find the request to exit button. Now this is going to go on the inside of the restricted door to allow anyone inside to easily exit without presenting their credentials. This next box has the proximity card register inside. You'll use this to activate each proximity card. Finally, you'll find this proximity card reader, which will go outside the door and only let people in based on the credentials of their proximity card. Now the only thing left in here is this large box, which is the panel itself. When you open it up, you'll see this attractive metal cabinet. Inside the cabinet, you'll find your quick start setup guide, your mounting hardware, a small screwdriver for wiring the panel, a 12 volt DC power supply, and of course your Atlas access control panel. You can think of this panel as the brain of your access control system. We will wire everything to this panel, we will configure everything using this panel's built in web interface, and this panel is really what's going to end up making all of the decisions when it comes to granting and denying access based on what you tell it to do. And here is the box for the maglock that we're going to be using today. Inside is the mounting plate which will go on your door frame, one side of the magnet which will screw into that mounting plate, the other side of the magnet which you'll screw into your door, and finally all of your mounting hardware. Great, you now have a customer willing to be your guinea pig, you now have all the materials that you need, the only thing left is to get started. So the first step is to get your panel set up for the very first time. You'll need to go ahead and connect it to a DC power supply. If you purchase the Atlas kit, then your board will ship to you with the DC power supply already wired to the board. Then plug the panel directly into a computer via an ethernet cable. Open up a web browser and type the default IP address into the address bar. You'll most likely get a security warning, but just tell your browser you want to visit the page anyway. Don't worry, your connection to the panel is secure. Log in with the default username and password, both of which is admin, and this will take you to the initial setup wizard. Go ahead and follow the on-screen prompts to get your panel set up. and you should be good to go. Once you're through with that wizard, go ahead and disconnect the panel from the power and from the computer. Now let's go ahead and get all of our hardware ready. For this, we'll need two locations. First and most obviously, you'll need a door. Now maybe it's a door to a staff only room or to a back room, to a room with a safe, a warehouse, wherever it leads to, you just need one door. So for this example today, we're gonna to be using our tech room door here at Nelly Security. You'll also need a place where you're going to be placing the access control panel itself. Now if you're installing this in a commercial location, this is likely going to be located in a server room. Wherever you put it, just make sure it's someplace secure and someplace out of reach. So once you know where your door is going to be and where your access control panel is going to be, you can go ahead and run your cables from the door to the panel. And you'll need three of these cable runs. The first one is going to be here on the outside of the door where we'll put our proximity reader. Now as you can see there are six wires on the back of this proximity reader. 
so we're going to use the cable that has six conductors. On the other side of the wall, inside the restricted door, we're going to need a place to put our push to exit button. So the push to exit button has three wires on the back, but we're only going to be using two of them. So we're going to use our cable with the two conductors. You'll also need one more run of this two conductor cable running from your mag lock to the access control panel. Now all your cable runs are actually going to come out here and meet at your panel. So just to summarize, that's three total cable runs. One from the wall outside your door to the panel for your proximity reader, one from inside the door to your panel for your push to exit button, and one from the door frame itself to the panel, and that's for your electric lock. Let's go ahead and start on the outside of our door with our proximity reader. We'll start with measuring and drilling the hole here on the outside of the door frame. Now let's go ahead and wire our reader. The red wire here is for power, the black is your ground wire, the green and white wires are your Wigand data wires. Green is D0 and white is D1. The gray wire here gives you control over the green LED on your reader. Since we don't have a gray wire, we'll use yellow for this. And the purple wire gives you control over your reader's beeper. And we'll use our blue wire for this. Once all those wires are connected, you can go ahead and secure them with electric tape, with wire connectors, or whatever method you prefer. Then we'll come here to the other side of the cable where we will wire this reader to the access control panel. We will insert our red wire into the 12 volt terminal, the black wire into the GND or the ground terminal. Again, green goes into D0, white goes into D1. We'll put yellow, which is wired to the green wire, into the GLED terminal, and our blue wire, which is wired to purple, will go here into the beep terminal. Go ahead and take a look at this wiring diagram for the Wigand Proximity Card Reader. Let's head back to our door now and install our push to exit button. We will drill our hole here where we'll install the button. Now check out this wiring key on the back. It tells you exactly what each of these wires mean. White is going to be our common wire which powers the button. Red is our normally open wire and yellow is our normally closed wire. For our lock, we want the circuit to be normally closed so that there is always power running to the lock. Then when we push the button, we want the circuit to open momentarily, shutting off power to the lock and opening the door. So we'll wire this to the normally closed wire. Once we're back at the panel, we'll simply connect the common wire here to the button terminal and the normally closed wire will connect to the ground terminal. And that's it for the push to exit button. And here's the wiring diagram for that. Now our maglock has one extra step. Even though the panel is powered through PoE, that's not enough to supply all the power needed for the maglock. So we'll need to wire our maglock both to the panel and to an external power supply. First, install your maglock on the door frame and on the door itself. Pull the wires through and connect those to your cable run. The red is for power and the black is the ground wire. Now let's go to the other side of this cable run back at the access control panel. Here you'll take a female 12 volt DC connector and add two wires, red to the positive terminal and black to the negative terminal. Then take the other end of the maglock cable run, connect the red wire from the maglock to the red wire leading to the positive terminal on the 12 volt DC connector. You should now have two black ground wires. The ground wire from the 12 volt DC connector will go here in the NC terminal since again this is a normally closed circuit lock. The ground wire from the mag lock will go here in the common terminal. Then you'll simply plug the power supply into a power outlet and you're done. That sounds way more confusing than it really is. So to clear things up a bit, here's the wiring diagram for the door lock. If you do have a different lock, you'll want to refer to that lock's manufacturer's instructions. Now there's only one final step here, and that is to power your board and connect it to the network. Now there's a number of options available for you here, but one of the easiest and fastest ways to do this is by using PoE, or power over ethernet. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this video today. All you have to do is take an ethernet cable and plug the access control panel into a PoE switch. This supplies the board with both power and data. 
So once it's connected to the switch, everything should be up and running. If you don't have a PoE switch, that's no problem. You just have to power this board with a 12 volt DC power supply. If you've chosen to power your board this way, all you have to do now is plug your access control panel into your router with an ethernet cable. You actually can use Wi-Fi to connect your board to the network, but if you're gonna do that, you still need to connect it to an ethernet first. Once it's connected to the network, you can hop onto the built-in web browser and set up a Wi-Fi connection that way. Then you should be able to remove the ethernet cable after that. Just be sure the panel is in a place where it will receive strong and consistent Wi-Fi signals. Once everything is powered up and connected to the network, we can log back into the web interface. Navigate to the IP address you wrote down earlier. You may have to bypass your browser's security warning one more time, and now we're in. Once you log in, you'll see this main screen. Now this dashboard has a live monitor with all these alerts, so that at a quick glance you can see everything that's going on with your system. Now let's add some variables and adjust some settings. Now here's our tech room door with all of the default settings. First, let's create some locations and some areas so that the panel and anybody viewing the monitor knows where this door is with relation to the rest of the system. In our case, there is only one door in this system, but this is still helpful information to know, especially if you're going to be piecing together a much bigger system. First, I'm going to create three locations. Now, these are just general labels, and they don't really have any function other than helping you, the user, understand and navigate your system. This is pretty helpful, especially if you have up to 84 doors that you're trying to keep track of. I made the first location called Nelly Security, which is a building. I then created two locations, East Wing and West Wing. I called these floors so that their parent location could be Nelly Security. Now I have a building with two locations nested inside. Next, let's create some areas. Like locations, these are also mostly labels. However, these also have some functionality to it as people can move through areas to enter and exit restricted doors. I created two areas in the East Wing, Tech Room and Warehouse, and two areas in the West Wing, Offices and Showroom. So let's go ahead and edit these door settings. Since we're controlling access to the Tech Room door, we're going to say that the door is located in the East Wing of Nelly's Security. The entering area is Tech Room, and the exiting area is Warehouse. Cool, let's set up some door mode schedules now. First, let's make a public door, which we could use for any doors our customers might use. These doors will leave unlocked Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. But we'll still want our employees to be able to access these doors a couple of hours before opening and a couple of hours after closing. So I'll set the door mode during these hours to card or pin. This means someone can only pass through that door if they have a proximity card or a pin number that they can type in. Next, I'll make a private door. Now only people with proximity cards or a pin will be able to access this door. We'll make it only accessible Monday through Friday between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. Then on weekends, it won't be accessible at all. Now you can still set this up to where certain employees will be able to have access, so if you're the owner of a business, you can still grant yourself 24-7 access even if a door is not accessible on the schedule, but we'll get to that in just a second. Now we have a couple of door modes set up. Let's go back to our door and adjust some of the settings. Since this is our tech room, we have some expensive equipment in here. We don't really want people coming in here off the streets, so we'll make this a private door. That way it will only be accessible with a card or a PIN number, and only during business hours. Now we have our door ready to go, we just need to create some users so that we can grant them access. But before we do that, let's set up a few more parameters. User groups. This could really be anything you want it to be, but we're going to set up a few groups based on the departments here at Nelly Security. We'll start with three user groups, the tech team, the design team, and the warehouse team. All right, now let's create some user schedules. This is just like the door mode schedules, except that it grants or denies certain users access regardless of the current door mode. We'll set up two user schedules here, a boss and an employee. The boss will have access to all doors 24-7, 365, even if the door mode is unaccessible. The employee, on the other hand, will have access only during business hours, Monday through Friday, so this really shouldn't interfere with the door mode schedule. Alright, let's go set up a user. I'll just use myself as an example. I'll fill out some basic information here, and I'm part of the design team, so I will add my user profile to that user group. I'll give myself a code here based on my proximity card, and I'll give myself access to the tech room door on the employee user schedule. And that's it, we should be good to go. You can easily and instantly add card credentials to the user with this card enroller reader. 
Connect the register to your computer and add it just like you would any other USB device. Once you scan the card, it will automatically type that card's credentials wherever you have your cursor. Now that we have everything set up on the computer, everything should be good to go. So let's go ahead and test it out and see how it all works. All right, here is our tech room door that we have connected to the mag lock. Since this is on a private door schedule and it's in the middle of the workday, this door should be locked and only accessible with a pin or a card. And as you can see, it's totally locked shut. If I push this push to exit button here, it does let me open the door and walk outside. And once I shut that door, since it is on the regular schedule, it goes right back to being locked. But luckily I do have my proximity card here, so it just takes one swipe of the proximity card reader and I'm back in. It's really that simple. Now let's take a look at the live monitor from the computer screen as I scan that card. Notice how my name pops up and it tells you that access was granted. Now let me go back out there and use a card that isn't registered to a particular user. And as you can see from the live monitor and from the door being locked, I am not granted access. Now you can also come in here to events to see a more comprehensive breakdown of everything that has happened on your system. You can filter by event type or use the search functions here if you're looking for someone specific. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can also access your access control system through your cell phone with the app called Atlas. Now you have to enable this from the web interface and scan a QR code to register your mobile device. But once you do that, you can manage your system directly from your phone. Once logged in, you'll be able to manage and control quite a bit. If you click door status and navigate to your door, then click the hand symbol in the top right hand corner, you'll be able to execute certain commands. Granting momentary access is similar to scanning a card or pushing the request to exit button. It will unlock the door for just enough time for someone to walk through it. And I'm in. From this menu, you can also completely change the door mode. Then you have all of these choices available to you. For instance, you can go ahead and leave it completely unlocked, either for a set amount of time or until the next door mode schedule begins. You can also view the live event log from your cell phone. Manage current users, edit their information and permissions, forgive them from anti-passback rules, and you can even call them directly from the app. If you're in a pinch and need to create a new user on the fly, you can do that from the app too. You can also execute an emergency lockdown, view the system status, and so much more. Congratulations, you just successfully installed and configured your very first access control system. How'd it go? Was it as difficult as you thought it would be? More importantly, do you think you could do it again? Well, here's my challenge to you. Now that you've installed a single door access control system, do it a second time and a third time. Complete the same process over and over again until you're completely comfortable setting up a single door access control system. Once you feel comfortable enough to move on to a multi-door access control system, we do have two-door and four-door access control kits available as well. For these, you'll follow the exact same steps, only you'll add additional door locks, push to exit buttons, and proximity card readers. Once you've done a few two and four-door systems and you're feeling super comfortable with access control, then the sky's the limit. Well, actually, 84 is the limit, because that's how many doors you can have set up on one system with the ZK Teco Access Control products. To add up to 84 doors, you'll just keep adding additional panels. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is individually connect each panel to your computer and follow the same initial setup process that we did with this first panel. The only difference is you'll set these additional panels up as secondary panels. Just be sure that when you set up your primary panel, you choose manual IP so that the main panel always has a static IP address. Don't select DHCP. Your additional controllers will need a consistent IP address to look for for the main panel. For any additional panels you add, you can set up their network settings with the DHCP protocol. Once you complete the initial wizard setup for your secondary panel, wire whatever doors and hardware you need to, connect it to the network, and that's about it. You won't ever really need to log into the web interface for these secondary panels because it will receive all of its settings and configurations from the main panel. So even if you have doors, locks, readers, and buttons wired to these secondary panels, you'll still configure them and monitor them using your primary panel. 
And as you add more panels, you can use this dial here to label each one so you always know which panel is which. Just above all, take it slow. Don't feel like you need to jump into the deep end right away. Whew, that was a lot of info, but I really hope this video helped you get more comfortable with the idea of installing a single door access control system. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for more access control videos just like this. As always, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to call us and we can walk you through any issues that you come across. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you next time.